Well, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Introducing Menus, Giving Students Choice Without Losing Control of the Curriculum. I'm Dr. Jennifer Kordoff. I'm a professor at, in education at Azusa Pacific University out here in sunny Southern California. And my co-presenter is, go for it, Sarah. Hi, my name is Sarah Orton, and um, I work in professional development. Um, in Texas, I guess, we're saying where we're from. <laughs> yeah. And everybody except for Hawaii and Arizona fell back yesterday. So we hope all of you are in the right time and have your clock set and all those fun things. Uh, hey, so here's how we roll. Um, we really like to have an interactive session with our participants. So it's Either Sarah or I or both will be monitoring the chat, and as you put questions in there, we'll try to answer them in real time uh, to the best of our abilities. We are both used to working with uh, students that blurt, and so that's a normal thing for us, and we, I, we just really love the engagement piece. Um, one more reminder before we start, there's a PDF of the presentation that went out um, through the email that you registered with, and there are also some helpful uh, files. So if you can pull up those uh, helpful documents, then when we get to the interactive part of this set session, you'll be right there with us, hands-on, ready to create a menu. All right. Okay, so wh what are menus, also known as choice boards? Menus, um, or choice boards, are a type of graphic organizer that allows students to choose different ways of learning or practicing a concept. You're essentially giving your students um, choice through um, different types of menus that we're going to go over and show you today. Um, so this is an example of what we're going to be talking about today. This is a spelling tic-tac-toe menu, something very basic. It's set up just like a tic-tac-toe grid would be, um, where students would complete three activities um, in a row, depending on what you choose, if you're going to allow them to go vertical, horizontal, diagonal. But this is a great example, something I used when I was uh, teaching in my classroom for um, a homework menu. And notice at the bottom of the screen, there's the URL to Teachers Pay Teachers, so we don't want you to think we're violating someone else's copyright. And we want to remind you that you don't really need to make up your own menu, although we're going to show you how to do that. But there are so many resources out there on Pinterest, on Google, on Teachers Pay Teachers. So today we're going to teach you the, the, the understanding behind how you can use menus. And then don't be afraid that you have to make your own. There's all sorts made out there for you. So why choose menus? Why, why give your students that opportunity for choice? Um, menus allow students to take charge of their own learning, which is really important, especially when students struggle to see the importance of learning. Allowing them to choose um, uh, makes them feel like they have that power over their learning. They can be tailored to fit the needs of any students. For example, the, the menu I just showed you, the tic-tac-toe, was a lot of words. Menus can be um, scaffolded and differentiated down to kindergartners with pictures. It doesn't have to be all words, and we'll show you that as well today. It can incorporate, they can incorporate lots of different skills, and they can also promote higher level thinking. You don't just have to have one type of menu that's very basic. You can help your students learn to dig deeper into their own learning. Oops, sorry. My fault. <laughs> for being helpful. So, um, so how can you use menus? Um, a lot of times in, in our classes, we have students that just don't want to do the assignment the way you want them to do the assignment. And one of the most fun dialogues I have with students is I had a, a student who was very defiant, and he went, said to me, Mrs. Cordoff, I don't want to do the grammar. I said, oh, okay, Alex, you don't have to do the grammar. You can do... Here's, here's your choices, one, two, three, four, five things that you can choose other than doing this grammar worksheet. You don't have to. You don't have to ever do that again. And he kind of looked at me astonished, and I don't have to. Why don't I have to? And it, takes, it gives him the power or her the power, the student, 
instead of having me have to control every aspect of instruction in my classroom. So menus can be learned, uh, can be used for pre-assessment so that you're not reteaching uh, information that the students already know, because that, that just bores them to tears. Um, it's also a fun way for students to practice because they learn how to become more self-directed, they're in charge of their own learning, and I highly recommend it for homework, because then a parent and a student can work together on um, an activity that they chose and that might be more fun for them than, again, me as the teacher being the, the incredible master of the classroom. It puts me as the facilitator, it adds the parent in as a collaborator, it's a win-win. Um, and re remediation that's not boring. That's really important because I feel like those students who sit six and a half hours in a classroom, they've been worksheeted to death in some instances. I know we're all innovative teachers with technology these days, but don't send more worksheets home when they've already had too many during this day. So it's not as boring to remediate them. And it uh, can be a scaffolded approach to improving social skills. So for example, that you have a student who's not really well behaved on the playground, and that could be an understatement, um, a menu can give them choices to scaffold their social and emotional growth on a playground. So there are, there are a lot of menus, types of menus out there. The three that we're going to focus on today um, we're going to briefly go over a meal menu. Um, we're going we're gonna to dive a little bit deeper into both the shape menu and the tic-tac-toe menus and show you how to create them if you are interested in creating your own. So a meal menu is just like you would think. It's just like you would go to a restaurant and get a menu, um, except in this case it's different activities, learning activities for the students. So this Example came from differentiating instructions with menus, social studies grades K2. Um, this company has a lot of uh, menu books out there that are great um, to get started for different grades. This one is on citizenship. You'll see that there are a total of nine choices and two enrichment choices. And those enrichment choices are right here, your dessert, um, your dessert choices, which that, that is not something you would have to do. You could make them all um, required activities. In this instance, all the activities carry the same weight. No one is harder or easier than another. If you choose to do enrichment activities, they can be used for extra credit. Or if a student doesn't like one of the other options from the meal menu, they can replace, um, replace it with this dessert. Um, it, they can, it also allows for a varied level of thinking and one topic in depth. So this topic happens to be citizenship. So each activity, one coming from breakfast, one coming from lunch, dinner, and then obviously in this instance, the dessert as your enrichment, um, would all be about citizenship. But they're just, they're grouped depending on the type of activity. I like to think of meal menus as a list. I loved lists in my classroom. And a meal menu is a, a pretty way to show a list, but it's telling your students you have to choose one from breakfast. So you're still giving them choice, not saying you have to do all these activities, but it, you are allowing them to choose which from each of your categories uh, to complete. We're not going to create a meal menu today, but um, this is one of the easiest to get started with basic. Just think of it as a list. Now, can I, can I just... Uh barge in here and say, yeah. these menus also are really great um, UDL strategies. So universal design for learning is a scaffold approach where it's the same content, either simplified for a student with a special need or enhanced for a, for a gifted student or both. Some students that have um, a, a special need are also gifted, as we have um, said in previous presentations. But when you think about it that way, you can create the same menu for your whole class, but, but scaffold it for different levels of um, ability. So breakfast has three choices. Maybe one is a simplified. Maybe the middle one is um, on grade level. Maybe the, the third one is enhanced to meet the needs of a gifted student. 
And then, I, I, of course, the dessert can be optional and just for enhancement, or you could add it in there as, as a mandatory thing. But think of it as UDL. Another way you can frame it is that if you think in Bloom's taxonomy, it also follows those scaffolding in Bloom's. Um, or however your district or your school site talks about differentiation. It's also differentiated instruction. All right? So, sorry. Okay, so um, shape menus. Shape menu is what we're going to be demonstrating today. A shape menu includes, in this, this case and what I have created um, as a teacher, are three different shapes. You can see on here square, circle, and diamond. Um, there are nine different choices. All the products would carry the same weight. This is a basic menu with nine predetermined choices on here. Um, your students would choose one activity from the squares, one activity from the circles, one activity from the diamonds. Shape menu is one of my favorite menus to use because especially with younger students or students who can get overwhelmed quickly, it's easy to tell them, choose one from each shape, and it's very obvious to them versus a tic-tac-toe where I'm having to make an X or a, you know, a diagonal or whatever. Shape is very simplified. In the shape menu, you can have one or three objectives, and that's something that we're going to go over. We're going to show you what one or three objectives would look like in a menu. Um, and as I said, three completed tasks, one from each shape. So this shape menu also came from a differentiating instructions with menus book for math grades K2. This is on addition. So the students are choosing one. They might choose here, here, and here. And the time frame is when the activities have to be completed are up to you as the teacher, the facilitator, one a week, one a day, three in a day, depending on what the needs of your student are and what the needs of your, um, your learning goals are. All right, we're going to create a shape menu together. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to be using a Google Doc just because I feel like those are a little bit easier when I want to share them out with my students. So I will go ahead and share my screen. So I have opened up a Google Doc from my drive. I just clicked File, New, and here's my pretty Google Doc. So in Google, the way that I can insert a menu is by going to actually a new drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on New Drawing. All of these demonstrations are also listed in the resources menu that was, or I'm sorry, resources handout that was sent to you. There's demonstrations. There's lots of good demos out there that will help walk you through the steps that we're going through today. So in order to insert my shapes, there's this shape button right here. And this is my drawing board, you can see. So all my shapes need to fit here. So I'm going to insert, you can insert any shapes you like. Square, circle, and diamond are the best to use. I tried triangle, and it's very hard to write inside a triangle. So diamond one. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my square. I like that size. I'm also going to, oops, what just happened? Share my menu, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to change the background. I don't want it to be blue, so when I print it out, I don't want the color to be blue. So I just need to change the fill color to transparent. Instead of drawing out three squares, I'm also going to go ahead and hover, click on my square, and you can click Control-C to copy, Control-V. My students would call it Velcro, V for Velcro, and I'm going to paste that twice. And I'm just going to drag my squares over so I don't have to create them all over again. So here's my squares. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw in my circles. Same thing, I'm going to, I don't want it to be blue unless you are making it digital and you want color. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing in Control C and then Velcro it. Control V, Control V twice. And I'm going to move it. And what I like about Google Drawing is that it lines it up for you. So I don't have to worry about if it's not even except this is not even right here. We go, and then my last shape I'm going to insert is a diamond. I like to have all of my shapes already put in for when I type it, so I don't have to, oops, 
I don't have to uh, add in one shape at a time as I'm going. My, my board is already set up. I also could just print from this screen if I don't want to type on it, but this will be a little bit easier. Control copy, control V for Velcro or paste. All right, and there you go. So this is your, this is how you would insert a drawing. I'm gonna go ahead and click save and close so you can see what it would look like on my Word document. There it is on my Word document. Um, so I'm gonna just, all you have to do is double click on it and it'll open back up. What's nice about Google is I can type right into my square or my shape. I don't have to insert a text box or anything and it'll make it all aligned nice and pretty for printing. So today for a shape menu, we're gonna be creating a playground behavior menu. So I have a student who's having a hard time on the playground demonstrating proper behavior. So I'm going to give them a menu, a choice for how they're going to play when they're on the playground. So they have one goal, one objective, and that's to improve their appropriate playground behavior. So as a teacher today, I've decided um, I want their activities to be simple the first day. They're gonna choose one activity each day. The first one, I want them to swing with, with a, um, I'm sorry, yes, swing with a buddy. So I'm gonna allow them to do one thing with a buddy, and I'm gonna center it, just clicking, highlighting, and I can actually center it in all of them. Swing alone is my separate activity, and I'm gonna give my, this student needs two opportunities for um, doing an activity alone, just because this is the first day and I don't want to overwhelm the students. So they have two opportunities to choose from an alone activity, one opportunity to choose an activity with a buddy. Um, <clears throat> so my goal for this one day is for them to choose one of these activities. On day two, I want my student to choose one of my circle activities. And I'm going, I'm, I'm encouraging my student to play with others because that's how they're going to exhibit appropriate playground behavior. So I'm going to still give them the choice to do something alone. So the first day I'm going to say, feel free to jump rope alone. You can do it all by yourself. I like my stuff centered. Don't need to do this. It's just this button right here. I'm going to give them the same activity, but this time I'm going to say, you're going to do it with a buddy. And then to make things easy for me as the teacher, but also something that's familiar. Maybe yesterday they did choose swing with a buddy. I'm gonna allow them to choose that, that option again. You'll see I have two options for doing something with a buddy, and I'm kind of phasing out doing something alone. <clears throat> Excuse me. My last day, I want them to do an activity with a group of friends or a group of students. So. I chose, my language says with the friends, but it's okay, you can, you can tailor the language to be whatever your student needs. So I'm gonna say play kickball with a group of friends. If my student's like, well, I don't have friends, then change it with a group of other students. Right, can I, can I jump in here real quick? Yeah. Um, okay, so it can be all during one week, but it can also be scaffolded over a month if an IEP goal for behavior is severe enough that it will need a lot of time, that's completely fine. And don't forget to use your buddy classroom. So many, um, many uh, class, classes will have a, an older class as a buddy room. So if you have a kindergarten class, you could have fifth grade buddies perhaps, or if you're teaching in an RSP or an SDC setting, you might have a, a class of older students who want to volunteer to help with um, having your student or students um, practice appropriate playground behavior, and that could be their buddy. Uh, the students love to help each other that way. Buddy classrooms work amazing. Yeah, so we wanted to show you an example that wasn't necessarily a mathematical science or literary example. We wanted to show you something where that would allow you to see menus can be used in uh, numerous, numerous ways and not just in the classroom to practice a, an educational skill. Social skills are also very important and menus can be very powerful because you're giving the student choice, but as the teacher, you have the ultimate choice of which activities you're going to let them choose. So my language is fairly simple for my student, but if I needed to insert pictures or have a picture-only menu, 
That is also very easy. You're just going to click on the image button while you're in your drawing. Um, something that I encourage and that I, I have done is taking a picture of a student actually doing that activity and uploading them to your computer, and then you can just uh, click the upload button and grab them so it looks like a real life image, especially since Google is not going to have every image like color an apple with your friend. You're not going to maybe find that in a Google image. So feel free to take your own pictures and upload them. So I'm going to click on the search bar so I can show you how to insert some pictures. So I'm going to look for one winging on Google. And the one that I <clears throat> found that I liked, there it is. You just click on it, then click Select. And it's going to come in very large. All you need to do is make it smaller. And here's my swing alone. And because I don't think I'm going to find one that says with a buddy, I'm actually going to control copy, control C, and then control V for Velcro. And here is my swing with a buddy, just two pictures of a person singing. So I've just made my menu go from text only to a picture and text menu. The same thing for jump rope alone. I hit the image button, search. And I'm going to type in jump rope. It is trial and error with finding images, which is why sometimes it is good to insert your own. For printing purposes, I do like the black and white images select. It will come in very large again. And I will just drag it to make it smaller. And there you go. <clears throat> so you can do that with your entire menu. You can make your whole menu um, just pictures. I'm going to click Save and Close again so that you can see what happens when it comes onto my document. One thing that um, I would like to remind you is if you click the Wrap Text button, that allows you to move your menu. Otherwise, it, the, the text can move around. And then up here, I can type in, you know, here's my playground behavior menu. And then I could put my instructions in. So that's how you create. Um, a shape menu on Google Docs using the Google Drawing tool. We will go back to the presentation, and you will see the completed menu right here. And you could print it out for your reference. And also, don't, don't forget to include instructions on your menu for your students to be able to use. Um, don't forget, if you have any questions, then go ahead and throw them in the question box, and we can answer them as we go. Yep, we're just monitoring um, that. I also just put out a suggestion that Pixabay also has some really good images that are free and that do not violate copyright. So the yes, URL for important. free images in Pixabay is also out there. All okay. Right. So we're going to go ahead and create another sheet venue. This time I'm going to show you a literary example. Um, I want you to be able to see how the objectives change. Um, and for those who don't need maybe a social menu, but to see how this would be used in the classroom for an activity, um, we're going to go ahead and, and do that. So I will go ahead and share my screen with you again. Okay. And I already have on my screen, I've already drawn the menu so we didn't have to take time to go through that again. I have my instructions up here. We're going to be working on diagraphs, CH, SH, TH. Good refresher to all of us who don't know what diagraphs are. Uh, direction, choose one activity to complete from each shape. Color the shape after you have completed the activity. So even if your, your students can't read what the directions are, it's good to put directions on there so that they can start associating the print with what they should be doing. So again, even though my menu is already in here, I just need to double click on it. And it's all here in my drawing, and I can edit. I just go ahead and click inside the box, and I'm able to start typing. So my goal for my students with this menu is I have three objectives. I want them to be able to um, read, write, and understand SH, read, write, and understand CH, read, write, and understand TH. So you'll see, you'll kind of see right here, I have CH, SH, TH. Those are my three objectives. So my menu here is going to hit all three today. So in my squares, I'm going to focus on SH. I want my students to use their SH cards 
They are something that I have in my classroom that my students know what they are. To practice saying 10 SH words. So that's one of the activities they can choose from. And again, remember they're choosing one activity from each shape, and all my squares are going to be the SH. Over here, I want them to be able to write 10 SH words on a whiteboard, because whiteboards are fun. And my last one, I'm going to have them walk the room, a good way for them to, to move and get some wiggles out, and find 10 SH words with a pointer. If any of you teach younger kids, you know the power of a pointer. So they're choosing one of these activities. They, to me, they all have equal weight. I don't care which one they choose, but I know that they're going to be practicing SH. I want them, they're going to do the same activities for CH and TH. So all I'm going to do is con highlight control copy, and then I'm actually going to move it over here into the center circle so that you don't have the kids that just go down in a straight line. Um, that way they're less likely because there are the, the kids that do that. And I'm just going to change this to CH, make sure that you do that. But now I don't have to retype everything. Same thing, they're going to do the same writing activity. Click in my circle, control V for Velcro, or paste, and change. And the same here. So you can see it. right now I have two objectives, CH and SH. Same activities. You can make them different activities. For the simplicity of this menu, I chose to have them all be the same activity. And then one more time for TH, control copy, and control paste. Whoops, that's not right. Okay, control V undoes. I didn't open up the triangle when I pasted it. Oh, maybe. That's funny. This one has a Text needs to be maybe smaller. So I might go and fix all the other text or not. So I just need to change this to be TH words. I need them to do their cards. Paste. There we go, TH words. And they need to I've used, I just need write. Copy, paste, make the text smaller. Make sure. So I have on here TH, CH, <clears throat> excuse me, and SH. So you can see using the shape menu, my students will complete one activity from each shape. They will hit three different objectives, SH, CH, and TH, and the activities are very simple. I, all I want them to be able to do is practice all three. This might be something they do if they have stations or center time and they do they have to complete three activities during the day. This might be over the course of a week. This might be review. Um, you would click Save and Close. And here it is. And again, just click Wrap Text, and then you can easily move your menu around if you're going to type other things on here for your students. If you don't like something, just double click. And if I wanted the smaller, um, save and close, and everything gets saved on here. So that's, that's, how, that's what a uh, three objective shape menu might look like. Obviously, this is a very simple one, but for the purposes of the presentation, we, I wanted you to see something that um, might, you might understand a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the presentation. I and mean, isn't it true that once you create the shape, Sarah, you could just um, make a copy of that Google Doc and then put anything in it. You, the shapes are there. You've done the hard work. You can just make a copy of the Google Doc, name it something else, and you have a whole new menu. Yes. And one thing, I'm sorry, I'm going to share my screen one more time for you, is review one quickly just inserting an image. Double click to go back into here. Click the image button. And if I want this is when it might be good if you took a picture of your students doing the activity, because I'm not sure asking them to, uh, asking Google to find, you know, walk the room with a pointer. I don't think Google knows what that is. Google's not that smart yet. So I might choose this, <laughs> this image. You never know. Maybe Google is. Uh, make it smaller and same thing. I might just put them on the right. And I can just copy and paste him and move him around wherever. 
Um, easy to insert images, like I said. Um, really good idea to insert your own images of students doing the activity, especially if you're not going to put words um, for your younger students or students who can't read or just need the, the visualization. Save and close. And there it is. You'll see on the presentation I didn't use that exact one, but that's all right. So here it is, the completed, the completed shape menu. So um, I would like to show you what one objective would be for, um, for this menu as well. Sorry for the back and forth. So let's say I really need for my students to practice SH. That, that is what I'm encouraging them to do, but this time I want them to dive deeper. So you'll see on my screen I have my directions, diagraphs, SH, same thing, choose one activity to complete from each shape, color a shape after you've completed the activity. This would mean that I'm printing it out for my students to have a hard copy of. So I've kept, I'm going to double click and open it, I've kept the, act, the basic activities that I had um, for my SH. And because this, this to me, when I'm thinking of a ver varied level of thinking, UDL, Bloom's tecton taxonomy, this is very basic. Um, so they can choose one of these three activities. Now, I have word families in my room, so I'm going to have them complete a SH word family activity. This is a little bit more complex than just writing SH words. I'm actually having them apply some of their learning of the words to an activity. So my circles are all going to be an equivalent level of activity. So I have one objective, and that's the SH. But now I'm just making, I'm going deeper each, um, each shape. So my circles, all my activities will be, hold the same weight as complete an SH word family activity. Um, my last, I would do three. In my diamonds, I want them to create an SH story using five words. Now, five SH words. Now, creating something is obviously the most complex level of thinking. They have to not only apply and analyze and remember, but they have to be able to put it all into practice. And they're creating something original that's their own. So these diamond activities are all going to be something that holds equal weight. They're going to be doing some sort of creating. Um, so you would put that in your other two diamonds. So you can see in my menu, if they choose one square, they might choose, I'm going to walk the room with my friend today, and then I'm going to do, obviously this would be completed, I'm going to do a word family activity and create. So the activities are gradually getting more complex, but you're still giving them the choice on what they're going to, what they would like to complete to build upon their own learning. So you will click Save and Close, and here it is. Um, and this should have been sent out to you, so you could see the, the differences in complexity that take place throughout the shape. And here it is on your screen. Now we're going to show you, uh, for those of you that are um, using Google Classroom or some other sort of platform and you want to be able to share it out with your students, we're going to show you how to do that before we create our final menu. Right. So there's two ways to do that. And before I, I go to that, I would also want to encourage uh, those of you who teach older students that the concept here could be applied to a unit, a social studies unit or a science unit. You're just scaffolding the curriculum and giving the, the students choice. So if you're teaching oh, yeah. biomes, or if you're teaching uh, World Civil War, War. I, yeah, they love to collaborate when you give them purpose in collaborating. And the, like sixth grade, I would do menus with uh, Roman Empire. And they had so much fun with that um, because they all got a different piece of the Roman Empire and they got to come together on Rome Day and collaborate and teach each other about the different aspects of, of the city of Rome and the culture of the Roman Empire. So don't think this is just for primary. It's for, it's for any age. Um, so you can create a template from a Word document 
or you can create it from a Google Doc. So let me show you how to do uh, to create a template first from a, um, a Word document. So here's my big screen, and this is a this is a sample of a, uh, some work that my students recently did on the Student Environment Tasks Tool uh, Matrix. They're doing a collaborative um, assessment of students. So what if I wanted this um, to show as an example for future classes, but I didn't necessarily want to give them the Word document or a PDF. I want them to see it. I want them to build upon it as an exercise, but I don't necessarily want to lock it down totally for them. So if I go up here to File, and they go to Save as Template, It will now save it using, and here comes my spinny wheel on my very slow laptop today. Um, it will save it as a template. There we go. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. See, and look down here. The extension is .dotx. That's a template. So it forces the students to make a copy of the template. So they can't write on your original template. If, so if I put it up into a, a shared drive and I just have them all accessing the same document, it forces them to save it under a different name. So I'll go here to my desktop. Boom, 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 boom. There's my desktop. And there's the set sample. That's a template. You can see right here it says template. I'm going to open that up. And now, if I want to save, I have to save it as, as a student, I have to save it under a different file name. Set sample Jennifer. So they can't, they have to make sure they save it as a Word document when they're saving it. Otherwise, they'll save it as a template and then you'll be in trouble. <laughs> so another way, so one way, again, for a Word document is to save it as a template. Okay, let's go back here. And the purpose of this would be if you're sharing out the digital copy of your menu with your students, you don't want them to be able to change the text or write on it. You don't want 20 or 30 students all on your original copy. You want them to have their own copy for them to be able to write on or color on or whatever your expectation is. That's correct. Now, the other command in there was to go file new from template. So hold on just a second. So I could go in here, File, New from Template. And that will take you to the template maker in Microsoft Word. And you can choose from a number of really fancy templates to turn into a menu or to have your, your students use. So that's another way to do it in Microsoft Word. Um, not my favorite. Actually, because so many people now use Google Classroom, I believe that it would be much easier uh, more efficient for the majority of people to use um, to use Google Docs because then you can share it out to all your students. Um, so you can do this. This is the resources that you have for this presentation. And if I wanted to save it as a template, I would go, if it was saved as a template, then my students would be forced to make a copy. And it would be copy of. Sarah? Yes, when you, when you put it in your Google Classroom or – so if you – let me control the screen real quick. I will show you. Sure. Okay, go for A little it. bit easier. So – all right, share. So let's say that you want to share it on your Google Classroom or to your student's email. Um, the Share button obviously right here. When you're in the Share mode, first of all, you want to change this to Can View. Because if you have it on can edit or can comment, you can expect all of your fun students to be writing all over it. Can view means they can only see it. So all they are going to be able to do is see this. They won't have a cursor. They won't be able to change the text color. They won't be able to do anything. Um, there are pros and cons of that. The cons is that if you want them to actually be able to color in the shape digitally, they will only be able to see the menu and they won't be able to actually write on it. So another fancy trick. Easy, which is in your resources menu that we – or resources document we sent out, is up here, change the button that says Edit to Copy. 
See, all you have the, to do. The coolest ti- this is the coolest tiny trick in the world, I think, for this, because all you're doing is deleting the word edit and changing it to copy. Yeah. So now and when now- you click share, when you click share now, um, you get the shareable link, and you'll see at the end of the link, oh, why not show me this, at the end of the link. Anyways, I can copy the link. But it's going to say copy up here. And so let's say I decide to share it out with, you know, with whoever. When she opens it, if she's my person, my student, um, it's going to say, would you like to make a copy of this document? And you have no choice. You either say no and the screen disappears or yes. Then what that allows the students to do is they are inside the document. They have their own copy so they can go ahead and, oh, I want to, you know, color in the shape because I completed, I completed this activity, so I'm going to, you know, color this, this square red or whatever. So they have their own version. The, again, the upside or the downside is that they could accidentally delete text, so it's not really advised for your younger students to do this because if they click the delete button, then they'll be sad. Um, your older students would be able to have their own copy and see it and add the text in. And they can always submit the assignment and share it back to you on Google Classroom or whatever whatever platform you might use. But once I've okay. placed edit with copy, they'll have their own version. And they can go back to previous versions. Um, yeah. Where you see the little buttons that says all changes saved to drive. If you click on that, it'll enable you to go back to previous versions of your document. So yeah. if a student really does delete stuff and is sad, you can help them go back to a previous version of that Google Doc, which is also a really powerful tool. Yeah. Um, so we have time for one more menu. And um, this is going to be my favorite way of um, allowing menus to be interactive and digital. So what we've showed you so far is really good for print. You've created something on Google Docs. You can share it with your teaching partners, your coworkers. Um, you can you know, file, print it out. but if you have students who will delete text, because even in fifth grade and even if you're gifted, you're going to delete the text because it's inevitable. Even as an adult, you delete the text on accident. I'm going to show you a way that um, is interactive and um, gives you complete control over uh, what students can, can move. So we're going to be going over a tic-tac-toe menu. <clears throat> Just like it sounds, you create a tic-tac-toe. You have nine choices. Um, in this, ex in this example from Teachers Pay Teachers, there is a free space. The example we're going to go over today does not have a free space, and I'll show you why. This can also have one or three objectives, meaning each of these um, activities that are in the text to toe can be one objective, just like the SH, or the, you can have, you know, CH, SH, and TH, and you just have to make sure no matter where their lines are drawn, they hit one, one of each of those activities. Um, it promotes higher level thinking, a variety, very level of thinking, and they have to complete three tasks down across diagonal. You, again, have the power. If you don't want your students to go three across the top, um, then don't let them. Tell them they have to go through the center. Tell them they have to make a diagonal. Um, there's, uh, you can make it so that you do, you know, if you were to draw, like this is a level one type of thinking. This is a level two type of thing. And as I'm scaffolding, my activities are getting harder. Then that way, you know, you would kind of like have to Sudoku here and um, put varied. So all my activities that are a one, which the I wouldn't want a one right here, um, <clears throat> because uh, then if they go diagonal, they're going to get a one. But you get the idea. I want. You're going to have to. You can create a menu board that pushes that doesn't give them the choice to choose three different types of activities that are varied in thinking. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of a simpler way if you don't want to have to figure out a varied level of thinking. So we're going to go ahead and create a tic-tac-toe menu together. And now we're going to use Google Slides. So same thing for a Google document. You're going to go into your Google Drive or whatever, click File, New, and we're going to create presentation, also called Google Slides. So what I'm going to do, I don't need these text boxes. Um, Tic-tac-toe is very simple. I don't need to insert any drawings. 
All I need to do is insert a table, three by three. Beautiful. I can make it bigger. Very, very simple. I like the shape menu because it's very simple in the fact that, that you tell them choose one from each shape. There's no, no questions asked, but tic-tac-toe is a little bit easier to make without having to draw shape. <clears throat> so we're going to create a simple spelling menu today. Um, I'm going to um, leave room up here. I shouldn't have deleted my text box. I'm just going to draw a new one. And I'm just going to write tic-tac-toe spelling menu. I'm going to center it. Oops. There we go. So um, <clears throat> here we go. So I actually created a menu that uses a, a variety of thinking within spelling. So my students aren't just rainbow words, write them 10 times, write them backwards, write them in a pyramid. I actually want them to dive a little bit deeper. So I'm going to show you, and on one of the handouts or in the presentation, you'll see I color coded it. Um, but my first and something simple is I want my students to write their spelling words in three different rainbow colors. So to me, that's just a simple, you know, remember, understand activity. Then I want them to write their spelling words in alphabetical order. Also, very simple remember activity. Um, writing the definitions of your spelling words in your own words. So a little bit more complex, but still to me falls in the same simple level. So these are all, I'm going to color code them for you by making them yellow. <clears throat> uh, they are all the same level of activity. So this one is also going to be yellow. And here I'm going to have them write one synonym and one antonym for each spelling word. So this is something, too, for your students. You can color code it, and you can say, instead of saying you, uh, you have to um, pass through the middle is what we're going to make my students do. I'm sorry, I should have said that. I'm going to force my students in their directions. I'm going to tell them they have to pass through the middle so that I, they can either go here, here, or a diagonal, or this diagonal or here. They can't go three across the top or three across the bottom. Um, so in these squares here, I'm going to be doing analyzing and applying activities. So my, my spelling menu just got a little bit more complex. Oops, that made my line. I'm going to go ahead and back that. So in these two squares, I'm going to have them look for patterns in their spelling words that will help them remember them and what are they? What are those patterns? So you can see this activity is way more complex than write them in alphabetical order. Um, I'm going to have them compare and contrast the definitions of their spelling words. So if they didn't already know the definitions, they're going to now. It's a two for one for me. These two squares are also going to be remember and analyze. This grid I found, um, this, this style of um, thinking um, <clears throat> that we sent it out to you, how to do this uh, much easier than the Sudoku grid trying to figure out how I'm going to make it more complex. But here, too, I'm going to have my students draw a picture to represent each of my spelling words. And then I'm going to have my students write a story that uses all of my spelling words. So you can see these three activities are much more complex than the first three. Because I'm forcing my students to pass through the center, they're going to be doing the most complex level of thinking, I'm going to make all of my students design a board game using their spelling words. So you can see. In my menu, there's a variety of thinking. If you, I can also tell them, you have younger students, keep it color-coded, tell them. Pick one, one, one yellow, one blue, one orange. Then they don't have to think, how do, how do I do a tic-tac-toe? Color-code it for them. This is a digital menu. You don't have to worry about printing and colored ink. Also, if you are going to print it, you can just tell them, you know, leave it black and white. You could tell them they have to pass through the center. But you can see anywhere they pass through the center, they're going to get one yellow, one orange, and one blue. So this is a very creative way of um, making sure your students don't choose the three very basic, easy activities. If all, my whole spelling menu was simple, and I just wanted them to practice their spelling words, and I didn't really care if they were creating or analyzing, then my whole menu would be remembering and understanding, and I wouldn't matter. it wouldn't matter if they passed through the center. So what we're going to do to make this digital um, before I share it out with my students on Google Classroom or whatever, you're actually 
we're going to create little red X's that they can drag over to show me that they've completed the activity. But in order to do that, we need to download this template. So if you click File, Download, you need to download it as a JPEG or a PNG. You cannot download it as a PDF because we're essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to create this slide to be a background. It's going to be an image so it's locked down and they can't touch the text. So I'm going to download it as a JPEG. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new, a new slide right here and get rid of these text boxes. And then you go Insert. <clears throat> I'm sorry. All you have to do is click Background. I want to change the background of this guy. And instead of I can change the color, you know, that's awesome. But I don't care about the color. What I want to do is I want to get it from my, um, my computer. So on my um, choose, an, I'm going to click Choose an Image. Where's my downloads? There it is, and it's this first one. There it is. Click Done. Now this is locked down. You can see they can't write. They can't do anything with it. You've now just made a, a digital menu where it's, it's permanent on the screen. It's been glued on. You don't have to worry about it. If you make a copy, they still can't move the text around. Um, you could do this for a Word document as well. It was just a little bit easier for me to create it and show you using Google Slides. Then what we're going to do is we're going to insert a shape. And we're also good at inserting shapes now. I'm going to make an X. And I'm going to put it right here. And it's highlighted, so I'm going to go ahead and change the color. You know, I want a red X. And then we're, we need three X's, right? See, now my X's move. Control copy, Velcro for paste twice. And then I just need to line them up. Now when I go to share this out with my students, and I've shared it with Jennifer, and she's completing her activities, this screen is forever locked down. So when I click Share, um, you want them to be able to edit it because, oh, my X is, I'm sorry, my X has disappeared, uh, because you want them to drag. So now I've, you know, I've shared it out. I've, I've put it on Google Classroom or whatever. These Xs, they're the only thing they're able to move. So they can, you know, show me, oh, I'm going to do these three activities. And it is now digital. So you can just share out this one slide. Um, with all of your students, this is really cool. Um, some examples I've seen were like a tree in the background. It had little kids, younger kids, sorry, like moving apples to the tree for accounting activity. The screen is locked down. The only thing is like the, think of them as manipulatives. These are able to move now. Can also insert, right. you know, a little text box right here and have them put their name. And I, that is not locked down, which means that they can double click on it and they can type their name up here. If it's locked down, then they're not able to uh, type their name. So make sure you don't lock down that thing. Right. Go ahead and, and go and back. This is, this is so great. The only thing I was thinking about that I hadn't thought about before, Sarah, is go back to that real quick. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So if you have a student that's colorblind and you ask them to choose colors, that might be problematic. So make sure Right, which is know. why you would tell them – which is why you would right. create a black and white menu and tell them they have to pass through the center. The example that I sent out, tic-tac-toe spelling menu, uh, for mm -hmm. the educators, I did type at the bottom for teacher reference, one, two, and three, and I numbered them. You can also consider for your students numbering them or using symbols. Instead of, you know, pink, orange, and yellow, I could put, I could put a star in four of the boxes, and so you have to choose just like a shape menu. You could also just right. make this a shape menu and make them pass through the center shape. Um, you can be very creative with it. I just wanted to be able to show how to make something digital and interactive for those of you who don't want to print it out and you don't want your students right. editing the text. Well, and say you have 32 oh. students and one of, them is, one of them is colorblind. So then you just go to that student and say, you need one activity from the first row, one activity from the last row, and center activity. It's really easy because color is great. I just, you know, keep that on your radar. But color is really yes. powerful because so many students just really enjoy the color. And again, this example, what I did by creating the digital menu um, and making it interactive is on the resources handout that we sent to you to go over it. Just remember, all you're doing is saving it as an image and using the image as your background, and it locks it down. Super simple. Yep. And it can, you can also do that in PowerPoint slides, can't you? Yes. 
you're just in Google Docs, uh, Word documents. All you're doing is saving it as um, a background right. image. And for those of you that are, that are using Office 365, we did provide some resources on your handout on um, the same resource, some similar resources that you can use with Office 365 as you can use with Google. So some districts are really going to Office 365, and we don't want you guys to feel left out. <laughs> are there any questions? We have about four minutes. And remember, menus can be used for um, literary, mathematical, science, social studies, um, social behaviors. Um, basically, remember a menu is the power to choose. It's the same that you would do if you have children at home. You're just providing them with choice so that they feel like they have a little bit of power over their learning. And it empowers them to be better learners by creating the menu. Don't feel overwhelmed by having to choose a shape or a Tic-tac-toe menu. Start with a meal menu. That's fun, too. Um, there's, yep. If you look out there, there's list menus. There's menus called 358, 258. Um, look into the differentiating instruction with menu books. Um, there's lots of already done activities. I used in my classroom 3 through 5 and 6 through 8 books all the time with my students. Great way to extend and build upon learning. Well, we, we really appreciate you spending your um, noon hour with us today, no matter what time zone you're on. And um, if you have any questions or you want to re reach out to us, our email address.